Welcome back and guess what? Today is an exciting video because I get to talk without a script about whatever I want. It's a great, it's a great day. Anyways, today, as I said in the title, I'm doing the Flak 88 edit and I don't know how it turns out, but hopefully it looks pretty good on the thumbnail because my last edit video did actually pretty decent, which I'm pretty proud of. Since making the Flak, I of course wanted to Photoshop a edit of it because I didn't do one for the Yak Tiger. For this scene, I actually wanted to photograph it on the way to school. What does that mean? Well, in context, I decided to bike to school on that day because it was Wednesday and on Wednesdays we go to school a little later than usual. So that gives you time to wake up and uh, bike to school instead of waking up at like 6. So we woke up at 7 and then we biked to school, me and my brother, but I went separate ways because I wanted to visit the park. And the park near my school, on the way to school, is uh, is very interesting. There's a there's just a weird forest there, and it's not really a wild forest. It's surrounded by civilization, of course, but there is enough land to be able to photograph some tanks and whatnot. So now at this forest, I had the exact plan of what I wanted to photograph because I've been to this forest before, and I actually picked out this certain place right here. And the special thing about this place is that. I really liked the the foliage here because if you see on this camera shot right now, all the plants here make the scene look like a very like miniature like um, pine tree forest. You can see the the like pine needles on the ground and then a bunch of uh, lush plants and they're not too big. To me, this scene just seems so perfect for a Flak 88 firing on some Russian tanks on the Eastern Front. But when I took out my Flak 88 to photograph it, I realized I made a huge time miscalculation uh, I thought that photographing would take around 20 like 20 to 30 minutes but um, it, it wouldn't it actually took like three hours so I got there and I had to get to school so I actually quit on photographing it in the morning and I decided to do it in the afternoon but before that I had to haul all my stuff through school which was lovely so I was bringing my bag and my camera and walking around and on coincidence it was actually one of the most liveliest days of at my high school because we had this club event where clubs would set up their booths and try to bring people into slavery or whatever there's even this uh, food club which is kind of funny and the only reason I'm adding this into this video is so I can record my memories of high school Ah, high school. Once out of school, I went back to the same film spot and there was only one big difference with the scene now and that was there was a sun. And I didn't really want the sun because I, because I wanted a colder scene. So, you know, overcast with clouds, which was in the morning. But since I didn't have time for that, I had to settle with the sun. And now after school, I had much more time to enjoy the scenery at the place. One big reason I like doing these photography scenes is because it's just so relaxing and fun. As you can see here, you can set up your own battles in this nature, miniature nature area. And it's just so relaxing to sit back with nature and just, you know, sit around and pose some toy soldiers. From these camera shots, you can really tell it felt like a huge forest from down there. And I would really love to make a stop motion here one day, if it's possible. If you guys give me money, I might do it, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, to the scene itself. So I decided to pick a ambush scene with the Flak 88 somewhere in the bushes, something like this, um, firing against a T-34 that I also packed. And the T-34 that I packed was my old T-34. I made a video on it, which was pretty good. Sadly, the gun broke when I was coming with it because the box is very, you know, it's, it's not the best at holding tanks, but it could be fixed with some super glue that I brought as well, just in case. With all my equipment laid out, I set up the scene in a bush and took a lot of photos. After spending a couple hours in the forest, my family started getting worried because I was in some forested area by myself, so they started calling me a couple times, so I had to go back. Plus, it's not like I could spend all day in a forest when you're taking 5 AP classes like me in high school in its junior year. That was just a slight flex, but don't worry about it. I will always keep making army men, army men content for people. Yes. Packing up my stuff in the boxes again, I get on my bike and I ride off. And I come back to grab my camera because this isn't a real scene. 
Now getting into the actual photoshopping process, here are all the photos I took on that day. And as you can see here, this is actually the thumbnail photo for the video. Um, although you might not recognize it because of the amount of editing that I did to make it look a lot better. But more importantly, here are the photos for the main scene. So I took uh, some starter ones to get like the scene like down. And then I took some more with some toy soldiers added like right here. And the final shots are over here. So I added a general to give it some more darkness. The composition here, what I, what I was going for was a circle in the foliage. And then you can see the tanks. And I'm gonna put a column of tanks here. I'll just have to Photoshop it in. But you can see the Flak 88s here in the darkness pointed at the enemy tanks, some soldiers, uh, just, you know, the crew. And uh, that's basically the scene. Now, I'm a little disappointed in the foliage because it looks kind of, uh, it looks kind of, well, of course the mini miniature foliage isn't going to look the best because there's no leaves. It's just a bunch of um, stems, I guess. Um, I also didn't like the colors of the scene, which can be tweaked, but I don't know how much because there's a lot of yellows and this looks more like an evening scene. I wanted it to be like cold and cool. Now as you can see I'm in Paint.net and Paint.net is a free editing program that you can use yourself by downloading it. I think uh, someone messaged me saying they decided to get Paint.net because of my video, but they paid for it. Um, make sure you don't pay for it unless you want to but this thing is actually free. You just have to dig around. Right here, I'll make a new file and make it about the same ratio as a video on YouTube because I like making lines in that ratio. It's good for the thumbnail, you know what I'm saying? And plus this photo right here is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. So you don't really want that unless you want to break your computer. So we're going to shrink it down uh, quite a lot. You don't really need that much resolution. So here is the final cropped image. And let's talk about this for a second. So first of all, I want to go through the problems with the image. Um, first off, this tank is, of course, not level with the ground. It's inside of a ditch. And also, it seems too close to the camera. When I was positioning this tank, it was kind of hard because the camera was in a bush. And uh, seeing what I was trying to take a picture of was kind of difficult. I can easily move this, though. I was already planning on duplicating this T-34 and making a column of tanks maybe on this ridge right here and moving it up would allow the gun to actually point at the tank so those are uh, one of the complaints my, another one of my complaints is um, this plant right here it just doesn't fit in like these plants up here they look like pine trees and these look like garbage other than that I'm pretty happy with it the ground looks like there's a lot of like pine needles or something I think I'm gonna have to go with a pine tree kind of theme with this scene one important tip when making uh, photographs is thinking about the composition. A lot of people just make a simple composition, they put the tank somewhere, they take a picture of it, and that's about it. But you want to keep it interesting and you want to make sure that, um, that there's a good focal point. As you can see right here, there's a focal point of the Flak 88. Of course, it doesn't really blend in with the background. The Flak 88 is a brownish uh, object and it's a little darker and then the leaves you can clearly see. There's a lot of contrast right here. Um, to make sure you see it. If this flat gun was taken on a bright dirt background, it wouldn't really work well because the flat gun was the same color as the dirt. The other focal point is the column of tanks that I will put here and of course I designed it so that I would pick a tank that would stick out from the background and you know a green one against a more brown background. That's the main focal points. These soldiers are just to make some liveliness into the photo, make it look like it's lived in. So for this scene, I wanted to have a like foggy day in a pine tree forest or something like that. Something like this image right here. You can see that the sun is still showing through. It's still um, shining onto the plants, but there's fog and it's very ominous. You can feel the cold in this image. There's a lot of blues and a lot of greens. And yeah, so that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna just do some color correction to make it have that same color scheme. Now this tool right here is pretty useful. It's called the Spot Healing Brush Tool and you can just remove stuff from your scene which is, you know, always always pretty nice. Of course it's not perfect, but um, it works most of the time. 
So halfway through color toning this, I decided to change the color scheme a little bit. Now before I wanted to do a green and blue color scheme, but I realized there was one major flaw to doing one of those. And that's because everything here is not green. It's mostly tan because the Flak 88 is tan and there's tan soldiers. It would make much more sense to make it a more orangey color like this. And that actually made me realize that the reason I've been using orange in so many of my color schemes in past edits is because they were all with tan toy soldiers. I should Photoshop some green toy soldiers next time if I remember. But now I think this looks a lot better. The dark blue with the green, it makes it look a lot more like fall. Uh, with the with the different colors of uh, trees in the background, it really looks like autumn. And it is autumn right now, so I guess it will fit with the theme. I don't know, this just looks a lot better than a more green color. So I'll be going with this for my final choice. So right here I started adding elements to the scene to make it uh, more how I wanted it. I wanted to give some atmosphere to it so I added some leaves overlay and you can see that it works pretty well but you can tell that they're fake once you flip them on. Um, I think it's because they don't have highlights like everything else but I tried to tone them to the same color. I really like how these leaves look like they're, they've fallen onto the gun though. Another thing about the scene is that there's a dark vignette around the image to give the focus more onto the flak and the gun area, where what it's shooting at. So here it's a little darker, here it's darker, and here it's darker. That basically a vignette is when all sides of the image is darkened to give the brighter part of the image more focus. But the main problem was that this corner right here wasn't as dark as the other ones and it didn't really match. So I also added a bunch of fake leaves right here. And you can also tell that these are fake once they are added on. I think it's because as well they don't have too much depth in their color and they don't have highlights. I'll try to fix that later. Finally, the last element I added was a filter overlay and this was uh, something like this. And I wanted to add this because it just looked kind of desaturated and I don't know, something was off with it. So I just added, so I was playing around with some features and I'll try to use this to add some um, light rays that are going in. Now I've added quite a lot more things. I added a little bit of fog in the foreground and then uh, a little bit of fog in the background. And this is an example of what I'm trying to go for. I also added some fake trees. So I got this PNG right here of some trees that I found on the internet and I photoshopped them in if I could find the layer right here. So um, it was easy to photoshop these in because they were so blurry because uh, that's how it was. Supposedly I just put them on here and then I erased some parts of it. And it looks pretty good. I color corrected it as well. You can see like it just doesn't have any connection with the ground. It just it's just there. Now on to the the tank. So for the tank, what I'm thinking of doing is just oh crap. Just realize this tank is made an inst in <laughs> an ugly silhouette here. I'm just gonna patch this up. You guys saw nothing. As I was saying, we're just gonna go into the foreground right here and we're just gonna cut this thing out like you would cut out a, um, a piece of paper. And I'll just do this with the pen tool. You just go here, you outline the tank. It doesn't have to be perfect because no one's gonna ever see this because um, it's so far away. Now this is pretty simple because we're just taking something from the same scene and just moving it somewhere else. Of course it looks a little awkward because um, it's not that blurry yet. It should be a little bit more blurry, a little more faded. And I think I can fix the bottom part of this tank. And to fix the bottom of the tank, I'm literally just gonna paste on another T34 underneath it to just cover up the wheels because it's so pixelated that it literally doesn't matter. Uh, no one, like they, you can't, you can't like see the, see the error. So now that these tanks are added, they don't look too real right now, but if you add the smoke and every other effect back in, they start to look more real. Now that I'm done with the tanks, we can finally sit back and look at the whole piece 
And I want to add one more thing before I kind of finish up the piece. And that's um, leaves because uh, I thought the leaves that I already added were pretty nice. But I want to add more leaves into the atmosphere um, to, to make it have that more fall vibe. So the first thing you want to do is find an image of some falling leaves which I searched up right here. I'm just going to copy this white one and I'm just going to paste it into the scene. And I'm actually going to add a multiply uh, effect to kind of see what I'm doing right now. Because if you just keep it as normal, you can't see a thing until you key it out. So I'm going to just place this into the scene and see what's going on. Okay, so now you got some leaves. Um, of course you want to remove the leaves that don't make any logical sense. Now, of course right now it looks kind of fake. But the main thing is to color correct it to make it match the scene. So you want to match the colors of the leaves to whatever, the, color, the I guess the leaves of the scene. So it still looks kind of unrealistic and that's because they don't fit in with the lighting. Right here, this leaf is in direct sunlight and it should be a little brighter than it is. This one right here should be a lot darker so you can darken them uh, depending on how you want. One final thing you can do to make the leaves look more realistic is to put them in the right focus range because as you can see right here, this leaf right here is the size of like a normal leaf falling from a tree but it's out of focus and if a leaf this big was out of focus it would probably be in the foreground around like this close to the camera and this size so it doesn't make sense for it to be so blurry even though it's at that location so of course you can fix this by just moving it around and then keeping the sharpened leaves in the more area where it's focused so right here, I think I'm going to call it the final piece. I might make a few adjustments later on, but this is basically it. And uh, I just want to talk about it for a little bit. So, so in this Photoshop, I made a focus less on visual effects, such as like gunshots and explosions and stuff like that. And I made it more on composition. Most of the, most of the editing is done for like these leaves, adding in foliage, adding in these other fake tanks. Uh, there's no VFX, there's no gunshots because it's an ambush scene and if I did add a gunshot for the flak it would just overtake uh, like everything uh, and I don't think it would look as good. I also tried to focus a lot on the color scheme of this piece. You can clearly see a huge stark difference between the starting point and the after point. To me though this isn't my best work. A lot of the elements that I re-added in are a little fake looking like the these back here they just look a little faded and like they don't fit. Maybe it's because they're actually life sized and it doesn't really fit in with uh, whatever is going on right here. Um, the leaves look a little bit fake although I, I really like this vine right here which looks like it's really attached and some of the floating leaves they just don't fit in because there's just not that many leaves on the ground to make it look like this is an autumn leaf place but of course this is all just for fun and I don't have to take it that seriously so uh, although I am critiquing myself it's just to improve overall I hope you enjoyed this little edit in Photoshop and um, I hope to see you next time in another one of these videos